This video is the third in a series about rate equations designed for chemistry A level. And in this one, we're going to focus on what the rate determining step is and how you identify it and why we also care. So it's going to be quite a short video because this is quite a straightforward concept once you've got your head around it. Most chemical reactions don't just happen in a single step. They're multi-step processes that we sum up using a single symbol equation. Um, so particularly if you're doing A-level biology, you'll be really familiar with this idea that processes like respiration and photosynthesis, at GCSE you learn one very simple, very basic equation, and then suddenly at A-level you're faced with glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation, and suddenly it's way, way more complicated, but we sum it up with just an overall equation. And the same thing is true in chemistry. Lots of chemical reactions are multi-step processes and those intermediate steps or those intermediate reaction mechanisms have different speeds. So if we're going to understand how fast a particular reaction proceeds, what its rate is, we need to know which the slowest of those steps is because however slow that slowest step is, nothing else can go faster than that. You can picture this a bit like going into a coffee shop to order a drink and there might be someone ready and waiting to take the order but it doesn't matter how fast he takes your order because the person who's actually making the coffee can't go that quickly. And so you've got a kind of bottleneck and, and so things are being slowed down by the slowest person. And that's like the rate determining step. The rate determining step, also called the RDS or sometimes the rate limiting step in other exam boards, is the slowest step in a multi-step reaction. It doesn't have to be the first step, it doesn't have to be the last step, and you can't tell just by looking at the overall symbol equation what the rate determining step is going to be. You need a little bit more information. So you're going to have questions that either um, ask you from a series of steps which one of these is the rate determining step, or they're going to give you some different mechanisms and say use the rate equation to suggest which one of these could work. The one thing that you need to know is that the reactants for the rate determining step have to feature in that rate equation. If you're not sure about rate equations, go back and watch the previous two videos. So here's an example of what an exam question might ask you. We've got the simple equation for a hypothetical chemical reaction here, and then we've also got a rate equation that goes with it. And below this, they've given us the two steps in this process. So even though the overall equation involves um, A and B and C reacting together to make D, we can actually see that we start off with A and B reacting together to make an intermediate, and then that intermediate reacts with C to produce the final product D. So we know that anything that features in the rate equation has to be part of the rate determining step. So we've got some A being involved here and we've got some B being involved here. And in step one, we do have A and we do have B. Step two features C, which is not part of the rate equation. And therefore, that tells us that um, this reaction is zero order with respect to C. And so that's why it's not involved in the rate equation. And therefore, my step two can't be my rate determining step. Now, it's worth pointing out here that there is a link between the partial orders for the different reactants and the rate determining step. So if I know that in my rate equation, I've got um, a first order reactant, which is E and a second order reactant, which is F, I know that in my rate determining step, I'm going to have um, one mole of E reacting with two moles of F. I don't know what it's going to make, but I do know that that's going to be the start of my rate determining step. Now we've said that any reactant that features in the rate equation has to be part of the rate determining step. But sometimes this can be a tiny bit hard to spot. So I just want to look at one of those examples where it's sort of slightly camouflaged. So again, we've got a hypothetical reaction where G, H and K react together to form something called L. And we've got a rate equation which has um, G in it as a second order reactant and H in it as well. So I'm immediately looking for a rate determining step that involves both G and H. But I've got a problem. So here's H here in step two and here's G here in step one. And I don't actually have a step that involves both of those reactants. But here's the thing. The G has reacted together to make the I and the I then is present in step two. So you could almost take that I away and substitute in two moles of G. So that's what you want to look for. If you've got a situation where you can't see all of the reactants you need in one step, look to see if they're in previous steps, because here we can kind of count the G's as being part of step two because they were necessary to make one of the reactants for step two. Hopefully you can see that RDS isn't a super complicated concept. Once you know what you're looking for, it's relatively easy to spot. So we're going to look at four quick exam questions to see whether you can identify in each instance what the RDS is.
So in this first one, we have bromo diethyl ethane um, reacting with some hydroxide ions from some sodium hydroxide to produce a product. And they've been a little bit mean. They haven't actually given us a rate equation, but they have told us that the reaction is first order with respect to the bromo dimethyl ethane and zero order with respect to the hydroxide ions. Now, personally, I find it a lot easier to visualize these things if I have a rate equation. So I'm just going to scribble in my margin that the rate um, is K multiplied by the concentration of the bromo dimethyl ethane. And then they've given us um, a two step process. So we've got step one and step two, and we need to deduce the RDS. So what we're looking for is which step involves everything that's in the rate equation and nothing else. Well, I only have one thing in my rate equation, and it's this bromodomethyl ethane from the first step. It can't be the second step because it's got hydroxide ions in it, and I don't have hydroxide ions in my rate equation. So for this one, step one is the rate determining step. Hopefully you managed to get that one. If you want to have a go at this one without me, then just pause the video now. Otherwise, I'm going to talk through it. So remember, we're looking for everything that's in the rate equation in the correct proportions. So we've got um, a particular reaction happening and my rate equation is here. And so I need both of these reactants present and I need both of them um, in equal proportions. So um, looking at these reactions, looking at these steps, the only one that has these in is my first step. So my answer here is step one. In this third example, I've got a reaction between nitrogen monoxide and hydrogen, um, and they've given me the equation there, and then they've also given me this rate equation. So I can see that we're second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to the hydrogen because it doesn't have a, um, a power. And so I'm looking for a rate determining step that includes two moles of nitrogen monoxide and one mole of hydrogen. So this is the kind of the camouflage situation we talked about earlier. I don't have a reaction that involves these things. But what I do have is one step that takes those two moles of nitrogen monoxide to make X. And then X is used in step two with some hydrogen. OK, so that's going to be my rate determining step because the X kind of um, acts as a stand in for the two moles of nitrogen monoxide. Finally, we've got one more example, and this time they haven't used proper chemicals. They've used A's and B's like I was doing. So we have a rate equation that has um, first order A and second order B. So remember, we're looking for a rate determining step that includes A and B, and it includes two moles of B for every one of A. So it can't be my first step here because I only have one mole of B. But then that AB product that's produced that's then used in step two, that does represent a mole of A and a mole of B. So here is my second mole of B, and it's going to be step two that is my rate determining step because it contains all the reactants from the rate equation in the correct proportions. Hopefully that all made sense and you're now feeling quite confident with rate equations. There'll be another video coming soon all about the Arrhenius equation. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.